In just under 24 hours time, the world's best cyclists are gonna be racing at this exact road. Crisis for O'Connor. To battle it out for stage two of this year's Giro d'Italia. But just how fast do these athletes that are at the top of their game really go? I'm going to see whether me, an amateur cyclist riding an electronically assisted bicycle, can get anywhere near the world's best up this 11 kilometer category one climb, the highest rating of mountain in the Giro d'Italia. This e-bike is heavier than a conventional road bike, coming in at around 12 kilos. However, crucially, it's gonna give me around 200 added watts. To show I really am trying my hardest, I've put my power meters on this bicycle so you can see in real time exactly the effort that I'm doing. Now, I think I'm going to need all the help and assistance I can possibly find for this challenge. So to give me that little bit of an extra edge, I'm gonna take one of my shots, one of my ketone shots from Ketone IQ. Now, when you run out of glycogen or sugar, your body gives you energy through another process called ketogenesis, which is the breakdown of fats in order to give you ketone molecules, which your body can then use as a fuel source. So instead of relying on your body to do this process, you can just take it in a handy drink here called Ketone IQ. There's been a host of independent studies performed to show you the benefits of taking Ketone IQ both before exercise for that additional fuel source, but also after exercise to supplement your recovery. They are believed to boost the effects of carbs and restore glycogen and protein to trigger muscle growth and repair. I wanted to put this to the test. I used to race as a full-time cyclist. Now at my best, as you can see from the screenshot with the data on the screen right now, I could do 422 watts for 10 minutes. That was back in 2019. For the past two years, I've only been doing a fraction of that training because I'm no longer a full-time cyclist. However, when we look down the screenshot to number five, I was able to do 410 watts for 10 minutes at a race a couple of weeks ago over in Ireland. I made the front group on the Queen stage. Long story short, I shouldn't have been capable of doing that amount of power for that amount of time with the training that I've done for the past two years. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pinpoint exactly why that, that may be, but I've never ever taken ketones before in my life, uh, and I started supplementing these little guys about two months ago. So there you have it. Ketone IQ work with a whole host of pro athletes and teams, including Team Visma, Lisa Bike, and professional triathlete, Sam Laidlow. Ketone IQ is much more affordable than you may think. If you are interested in this, if you wanna find out more information, check out the link in the description box down below low and use the code on the screen right now to give yourself a nice little bit of cash off if you want to purchase any but i've got to say despite this being an advertisement i am genuinely a big fan of these but i'm going to turn my assistance on we get a green light we're good to go this is the banner to indicate the bottom of the climb so as we hit this as we go through this the effort starts we hit the lap button and we begin now when we look at the elevation profile the bottom third, the bottom quarter of this climb has quite a few flat, flatter sections, sort of two, three percent. The race is definitely going to be going faster here because you still have the advantage of being in the slipstream. Where I'm going to pull back the time is the steeper sections towards the top, where hopefully my own power and the added 200 or so watts that we've got from the back there, but the motor will elevate me forward and allow me to go faster than the world's best. Trying to pace my effort. So far, I've averaged 328 watts. We're also having to contend with all the cyclists going up the climb to watch the race this afternoon. So I'm really just trying to hold the pace on this, on the flattest sections here at the bottom because I can't compete with the peloton. There's no way the e-bike tops out at, I think, 20k an hour, and the bunch is gonna be going faster than that. So, you know, I'm kind of fighting a losing battle there, but, but if I can just keep it steady, save the legs for the steeper bits, then I can use my power and the e-bike, we can really make a difference. The current KOM is held by none other than the shark, Italian Vincenzo Nibali, who in stage 14 of the 2017 Giro achieved a time of 24 minutes and 49 seconds. So I knew this would be the ballpark I would have to aim for. 7k to go there. That's about 4k done. We just left the town of Ferraro and I think that's the last village until we get to the top. So we just got open road and hopefully less congestion. Four 
4k to go banner we're in like a flat section here and i just felt the motor cut out and that was horrible that was horrible but thankfully 100 more meters around the corner and we're back into the climb so it kicks back in again but wow 2k barrier we're nearly there we're nearly home. The last two kilometers was the toughest. After having spent 17 hours in the car driving from England, my legs were screaming at me, but I knew the end was in sight. I just had to keep pushing. Last 800, last little kick up to the climb. I'm just trying to get everything out. Let Tede Pogaccia. Ale Pogaccia. He didn't smile. Hopefully that's me metaphorically beating him later as well. Oh, looks like we've got a traffic jam. We have, oh no, we can't get to the top. Oh, horrible, oh my God, that was hard. Like despite having the assistance, you're still doing the watts, aren't you? So it's still hard. But uh, that was a time of, when I mean, we couldn't get right to the top. We had 32 minutes and 58 seconds to the final corner, about 100 meters to go here. So we've got the time. I'm going to go home, lie down for a bit and watch the race come up here in a few, few hours time and hopefully the power of the e-bike can go faster than the world's best. This is completely anticlimactic, but as I'm editing this video, every clip after this one has corrupted and I cannot use it of the race coming through, etc. However, I do remember from when we filmed this last week that Pogaccia climbed the up order, climbed in around 24 minutes, about seven minutes faster than I did. And I was on an e-bike. Yeah, that's why he's winning the world's biggest races and I'm traveling to Italy to stand on the side and watch him. The level of these guys is ridiculous. Anyway, see you next time.